Hey guys, good evening. I am Akshay Dube, and I'm, today I will be taking you through how to create a pneumonia detection model. And uh, for this, we will be using uh, TensorFlow and Python as well. So let's get started. And I hope that you will all will like this uh, session. And just let me know in the chat section of uh, if if anything goes uh, if, if if you want to tell me anything or if you want to discuss anything or if you if you want your doubts to get cleared please just me tell on the chat section okay so let's get started so just let me present my screen so yeah i hope that my screen is visible can you all please let me know in the chat section whether my screen is visible or not and okay got it so yeah, so first of all, today in this session, we will be covering the uh, entire uh, from scratch to development process. So first I will be taking you through the concepts of uh, the topics which will be covered. So the topics which will be covered in today's session are, are what is deep learning, introduction to CNN or as known as convolution neural networks, the mathematics involved in convolution neural networks, the pooling layers, the activation layer, and what is basically pneumonia, and uh, what are what it causes, and how the model which we are going to build will be helping the people who are suffering from pneumonia, and uh, how it's going to, and basically in the current industry scenario, multiple organization, multiple health organizations are basically utilizing the power of deep learning to enhance the process for the treatment of the patients. And then we'll be coming towards hands-on building the model. So yeah, what is deep learning? So I'm assuming that you are all familiar with machine learning as well. So first of all, the machine learning is a process where we provide the input and uh, we take some classification model or regression model, we train it, and then we ask it to make predictions on the unseen data. So that's what a mach traditional machine learning is. So how basically machine learning and deep learning are different. So in machine learning, after providing the input, we need to create features or we need to create features on the basis of some ground rules. Of, and uh, basically what we need to do is we need to perform feature selection and all these process need to be done manually. And then after performing all the feature extraction steps, scaling step, normalizing step, what we do is we provide our input to our machine learning model and then we ask it to basically predict on the unseen data. Now, what is deep learning? So basically a deep learning is a subset of machine learning. And in this specific subset of machine learning, what we do is basically we take input data and we straight away provide that input data to a neural network. And then we ask that neural network to basically make predictions on unseen data. So the way in which deep learning is different from machine learning is that we don't need to We don't need to perform feature selection. We don't need to It is all done by the neural network at the same time while it's getting trained. In machine learning, we need we basically, after providing the input as visible from my screen, we need to perform feature extraction, feature selection, and then we need to provide it to the machine learning model. If our feature extraction and feature selection process are not optimized, then a model will not get trained and would not generalize on the, on, on the data, okay? So that's the reason why neural networks have been becoming popular in this field because we just need to provide that data and then the feature selection and the feature extraction process is done by the neural network during the training process. And then we can ask that neural network to predict on unseen data. So basically the neural network or the CNN and humanize, what's the analogy between all these three? So basically the neural networks are actually inspired from brain neurons. As visible from the right bottom, you can see that there's a diagram of a neuron that basically involves uh, different types of different parts such as axon, dendrite, neural impulse, and then there is cell body. So in the same way, the neural networks have also been inspired from these types of brain neurons, basically. So what happens is that uh, as visible from the 
top diagram you can see that there is brain and then there is a encoding process there are neurons there is a decoding process and then a brain gets to analyze what is actually happening and what it's basically so in the same process the common neural network also performs in the same process they also take images as an input they extract features after extracting the features they basically perform uh basically dimensionality reduction process that's known as pooling in neural networks so after performing these steps we get a array and after after getting an array we asked our uh, neural network to predict or basically classify or perform regression or whatever we want and in the same way the human brain brain works as well it our eyes see an image then our then a, then the visual cortex of a brain basically extract uh, features from those images and then perform some internal process and uh, after performing some internal process the image is being basically decoded and we come to know that how what what we actually are seeing so the convolutional neural networks have been designed to mimic the human vision process and that explains their effectiveness as well okay so ppt is not visible just let me show okay just give me a chance okay so i hope that ppt is now visible just let me in the chat section whether ppt is visible or not okay great so the ppt is visible right now okay so yeah so i was talking about the difference between machine learning and deep learning so in machine learning let's summarize all the steps which i talked about till now so in machine learning we need to take the image basically any data as an input we need to perform feature extraction and then we need to perform the feature scaling and uh, then after perform, performing feature scaling feature selection and feature extraction then we need to provide those data as an input to our machine learning model and then we ask that machine learning model to basically predict on an unseen data now now basically the difference between machine learning and deep learning is that in deep learning we need to provide the data as an input and then the feature extraction and selection process occurs in the same neural network as we perform training and we perform and we iterate through different steps and then we can ask this trained machine learning model to basically predict on an unseen data yeah and now yeah so the neural networks are actually inspired from brain neurons and the convolutional neural networks have been designed to mimic the human vision process and thus this also explains their effectiveness as well so basically when we see an image our let us know that what we are actually seeing the convolutional neural networks also perform they takes they take image as an input and then they extract features from it and then after extracting the features they use um, basically then we can use to classify or perform a regression as according to a problem statement so basically this is how actually our uh, convolutional neural network works so basically let's get some in information about what basically cnn is and uh, what why cnns are used and why they are so much effective 
and then we will be proceeding towards the another section where that's basically the mathematics involved behind cnn so just let me know the chat section whether the ppt is visible i think now it's visible and uh, let's see how it okay okay great so yeah let's continue so basically convolutional neural networks is a specialized type of neural network which is known for processing data in a known grid type format like images and as we all know that uh, the data we need to provide as an input should be converted into a numerical format so first of all what we try to do is basically we actually convert the image into an array and an image is like basically a 2d array and uh, it can be a 3d array as well but that's for the color process for a grayscale images it's a 2d format and for the different types of uh, there are different types of formats available for the image as well and the most popular formats are grayscale format and the normal uh, color format and basically cnn is the convolutional neural network are uh, supervised deep learning architecture so that means that we need to provide the input data and also we need to provide the labels that are basically associated with that data and uh, then we need to be and then our neural networks is a good to go we neural network network will train itself upon the training data and will predict the labels for the unknown data and basically cnns have been used for variety of tasks such as image recognition image classification object detection segmentation video surveillance etc and now this is a whole architecture of a convolutional neural networks and the process which it it involve so basically there is an input image the cat on the right and then we perform convolution operations then we perform max pooling operations and these blocks can be repeated n number of times and basically the number of times we repeat these steps will basically increase the depth of the architecture as well as it will increase the complexity of a deep learning architecture so basically when we perform these step we need to keep in mind that uh, that yeah basically what's our problem statement if a problems if these are basically the number of layers uh, can be also considered as as one of the hyper parameters and uh, for the first instance for example we have a data and we now want to build a image classification model so first of all we should start with as low as num basically lower number of layers and then gradually increase the number of layers if we aren't able to achieve the accuracy so yeah so if you yeah so don't worry if you don't know about convolution max pooling we will be talking it about in a further slides and we're also discussing the mathematics which is basically involved behind these convolutional neural networks so yeah so this is just a whole a basically high level diagram of, of how cnn network actually looks like so we give image as an input it performs convolution operation it performs yep sorry for the delay so basically what i was trying to say is that uh, basically yeah just give me a second yeah i don't know why this error is occurring my screen share is automatically getting disabled so yeah so no issue so basically yeah i was trying to tell you that uh, these this uh, whole cnn neural network involve these processes and after we basically get an ma matrices of features then we basically use flatten layer to convert that matrices of features into a 1d array and then we use that 1d array to basically classify whether the input image is cat or a dog okay so this is the, the this is the information about the structure of cnn so basically a cnn network for image classification contains okay following layers oh, that's a typo 
yeah following layers the cnn layer the pooling layer the flatten layer and the classification layer so basically what cnn layer is does is basically this layer extract features and basically finds the pattern from the input images pooling layer basically reduces the dimensionality by summarizing the neighborhood pixels so many of you will be having doubt that why we are using actually using pooling layers so when we perform a uh, convolution operation so there is a specific a uh, number of filters we need to choose and depending upon that number of filters the dimensionality of the matrices or basically you can get say tensors or matrices or arrays they are basically just a general term for each other yeah so mat so yeah so the dimensionality of our feature or basically the dimensionality of the data gets increasing so to reduce the dimensionality of the data we we'll use pooling layer and then we use flatten layer to basically convert the features obtained from pooling layer to convert into a 1d array because our classification layer needs input as a 1d array and uh, in every type of neural network the final layer basically needs to be a 1d array because if it's in if it isn't a 1d array then we won't getting an output as a label or uh, we won't be getting output as a probability score so if we are specifically dealing with image classification problem our last layer need to be a 1d array so that we can basically ask feed forward neural networks to predict the class or the probability score as well so this at this time some of you may be thinking that this is a rocket science but that's not we'll be going through detail in the further slides so yeah so let's first talk about what is convolution layer so basically a convolution neural network is a neural network with some yeah and so with some or many convolution uh, layers so basically a convolution layer has a number of filters that i was talking about a convolution layer has a number of filters that does convolutional operation so basically what is a convolutional operation now so convolutional operation is nothing but uh, an umbrella term for feature extraction or you can say uh, basically we yeah so from the diagram you can see that we pick some specific part of an image we apply a filter on it and then we get extracted features from that input image so that's what a convolution operation is so basically now we'll be going in detail that how this convolutional operation is basically how this convolution operation works now first of all let's go behind to the scratch part so this is how an image vector looks like this is a 6 cross 6 image this is a, yeah this is a 6 cross 6 image and uh, in reality the image must be of must be of very large size for example 5 in 12 into 512 or it can be 1024 into 768 the resolution of a laptop is somewhere around 720 pixels that is around uh, yeah so yeah so a laptop is basically 1080 pixels and uh, yeah so the normal laptop which are in the market right now have 1280 into 720 pixels of resolution so this is a, just a small part of that particular image or you can consider it as a very small image which is of 6 cross 6 size and now there are filters so these are the core of the convolutional operation so there are some filters so each filter allows us to detect some patterns for example if we want to try to detect the edges of the images or if you want to try to detect vertical lines in an images and horizontal lines in images so there are different different filters for that and we basically the these th specific types of filter allows us to extract specific type of information from the images for example yeah so these filters consider of two values minus 1 and 1 so basically if we want to detect the edges the minus 1 and when ones will be placed in a particular order if we want to try to detect any horizontal lines these uh, filters will a specific pattern and so on so we don't need to worry about choosing worry about the values of minus 1 and 1 
right now because it's automatically performed by a deep learning library when we perform the convolution operation so this is just to give you a, an insight of how the convolution process actually works so as of now we have a six cross six image and we have a filter and don't worry about minus one and one being placed in these filter it's uh, just for a specific type of operation and different types of specific operations are applied during a convolutional process in a particular image so there are many types of filter for example these two types of filter and then there will be other the third type of filter where the minus one will be placed in uh, basically row format and ones will be placed here one 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 and minus one minus one minus one so these can be placed in um, any format and that specific format will basically depend on what type of feature we are trying to extract for the images so for example in the in the second filter we have minus one in the in the first column we have minus one minus one minus one in the second column we have one 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 and in the third column we have minus one minus one and minus one so basically in the filter number three we'll be having something like uh, minus in the column format one 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 and then minus one minus one minus minus in the, in the second column and in the third column again minus one minus one minus one so there will be different different types of filter and basically we can also define that what should be the filter size so here the filter size will be is is something yeah it's three cross three so yeah so the filter size over here is three cross three and we can also define that if a uh, if we can also define the size of the filter it can be four cross four it can be five cross five it can it can be anything it basically depends on what type of feature we are trying to extract for the from the images so yeah that's all about the filter and the convolution now we will be going through further steps and i'll be telling you that how this particular six cross six image mattress will be interacting with different types of filters to get to basically perform the convolution operation yeah so for example this is a one filter okay we are taking filter one and then we are placing it in basically just let me check whether okay yeah so yeah so just place this three clause three filter on these images okay and then perform the dot product so just multiply the yeah so just perform the dot product and then we'll be shifting the filter again in the next column by one and that is basically known as stride so a stride is basically a number by which we shift the filter horizontally okay so basically if we have if if i have chosen stride 2 then after performing the first dot product of the particular yeah so after performing the dot product of this three cross three part of the image just consider the three cross three for the first uh, the um, the first uh, part of the mattress that is covered that is bordered by red just just concentrate on that one so this particular filter one will be placed on the image on the image mattresses the dot product will be performed and after performing the dot product we will be shifting the filter by one column so if we are shifting the filter by one column now we will be applying a filter on 000, 100, and 011. So basically, if we would, if we choose our stride as two, and it is equal to two. So after first dot product with the filter, now the filter would have been shifted two steps horizontally and now the yeah so if i would have, would have given stride as input as a two then my the this filter would have been applied next step on zero 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 mat zero zero one and one one zero talking horizontally 
okay so this is how the convolution and basically this is for the first step of the convolution process and this is how basically the filters are applied on the matrices or basically the sub part of the image and this will continue till the whole image has been covered okay so if i talk about stride one then the, this basically the first three cross three sub part of the matrices will be considered and then the filter will be shifted by one place horizontally to the right and then again the same process will be then this and then again the same process will occur and then this process will occur number of times till the whole image has been covered yeah so you can see if stride would have been two then the next uh, then the next sub part sub matrix of this matrix would have been 0 0 0 0 0 1 and 1 1 0 talking horizontally so these this is the whole process summarized in one slide we are performing the dot product and after performing the dot product we can basically see that we have got different values for different type for different sub matrices of that six cross six image and now our uh, basically a new matrix that is a feature extracted matrix looks something like this three minus one minus three minus one minus three one zero minus three minus three minus three zero one three minus two minus two and minus one this is the result of applying filters on the image and then we'll then if there are n number of filters then we'll be getting n map n feature maps for a particular image okay so as visible from the screen uh, let's go to previous slide so for the one filter of three cross three applied on six cross six image we get a matrix of four cross four and now if we are applying n filters so now our feature map or basically we'll be getting a new matrices as Two cross four cross four. So basically, this two, uh, you can see in the in right to bottom image. This basically two tells that how many number of filters were present in the images. And now, if we'll be converting, if we'll be applying n filters, for example, if I'm applying ten filters on this whole image. So now I'll be getting the output as ten into four into four. So that was basically I was talking about if we in keep on increasing the number of filters, the dimensionality of the data will be increasing and increasing and increasing. So we first try to keep these filters as low as possible so that the complexity of the model and the model doesn't so that that so that the complexity of the model doesn't decreases and uh, the feature extraction process is faster. And the, the next step is basically the pooling step. So now in the there are different types of pooling available. And uh, the most common one is max pooling. And then there is an average pooling. So in average pooling, yeah. So let me just tell you what is a pooling process. So after applying the filters, we got the matrices on the left, which is in red. OK, so we got this four cross four matrices as a result. And now what we will be trying to do is basically in the max pooling process, what we need to do is basically we'll be taking the max or uh, we can say that uh, basically this will convert the whole image into a lower dimensional format. And that will be seen in the next slide. OK, uh, OK, so next slide is about RGB. Yeah, so yeah, so just uh, yeah, so this is just a one. So yeah since we performed on all that all the two four cross four matrices and this this is just a one instance Yeah, and this is just a one instance of uh, where we are applying the max pooling in just one array or we can see the one extracted feature map and then this pooling will be applied to the next second extracted feature map and what this pooling does is basically this max pooling basically uh, basically selects the max of the neighbors and basically 
this max pooling allows us to reduce the dimensionality in the way that uh, yeah so yeah so we got this um, 3 minus 1 minus 3 minus 1 as an output after applying the filter one okay so right now consider vertically so after applying the filter one on 6 cross 6 image we got this 4 cross 4 uh, the four cross four matrices as a result. Now, after performing the max pooling, what will we do is basically the, yeah, so we are max, yeah, so we need to define that how many sub mat, basically what is the dimension of the sub matrices we want to consider, okay. So here we are considering two cross two matrices for the max pooling feature. So basically the max pooling will be applied. So for the first two matrices, two cross two matrices, that is three minus one, minus three and minus uh, and one. The output of this particular uh, matrices will be three. And similarly for the second, select the maximum pixel value zero. And similarly for the th this uh, third one, three. And for this one, that is basically one. So our new feature map, after applying the max pooling will be three, zero, three, and one. So that would be the new matrices. That would be the new matrix, the three, zero, three, and one. So yeah, so now our four cross four matrices is basically being converted into basically, yeah. So it will just uh, reduce the dimensions of this particular feature map. And it will, would be getting a two cross two matrix. Okay, two rows and two columns. One for this, one for this, one for this, and one for this. Okay, so that's how the basically max pooling occurs. So let's now move on to the next slide. So what we've been talking about till now was all about the grayscale images. Now, if there are color images, then we would be getting three six cross six uh, vectors okay so yeah for one for the red so basically all the images in a all the images in computer or in computer graphics are considered consist uh, consists of uh, red green and blue so the first uh, channel would be for red the middle would be for green and the backward would be the, for the blue and this Basically, this arrangement can also be altered using OpenCV library because the OpenCV library diff opens the image by default in blue, green, uh, red format. And uh, the actual images we see on our screen are RGB format, but this doesn't basically alters the convolution neural network. So to the convolution neural network, we can give any type of input. If we want to give color images and input, we can provide an RGB format or BGR format. The only limitation is that it should have three channels as defined. Okay, so all the operations we performed on six cross six images till now will be performed for every channel. Okay, for the first red channel, then green channel, then blue channel. And now what are activation functions? This is one of the most important topics and basically the activation functions are a function which takes uh, input and then they map that input using a particular formula. And it has been seen that uh, the ReLU function, the ReLU and the leaky ReLU activation functions perform best for the neural network. So why do we need uh, activation functions basically? So in a neural network, if uh, we so if a neural networks after performing each operation we need to map the we need to map the output of every layer to a particular value okay so that's why we use activation functions and basically we need activation functions because if we won't be using activation functions our neural network will basically just consist of some linear layers and would be just act act like a linear regression. So to avoid acting it like a linear regression and to perform effective training, we use different types of activation functions. And don't worry about, about the activation functions. And if you don't get the math or it, it seems too complicated at the point, don't worry because when we will be applying this whole convolution process and rebuilding our whole neural network, it would be uh, basically some couple of steps and it would seem very easy. Okay. 
so basically sigmoid function maps input basically takes uh, an input and maps all the values less than okay so yeah so basically there these are different types of activation functions sigmoid tan h relu leaky relu max out elu and uh, basically these activation functions you, as evident from the graph you can see that uh, for example relu if there is any negative input then relu will map all the values to zero and the positive values are remained as it is and in leaky relu we basically define that uh, for every negative input how much uh, how much the output should variate for every negative input and then for the positive input the it remains as it is okay and basically what sigmoid does it maps every value from okay so screen is visible right okay yeah so screen visible great so yeah so let's now proceed towards applications of cnn so basically cnns are applied everywhere in today's everyday life everywhere you see filters for example instagram snapchat and uh, everywhere you see a camera there is some sort of cnn algorithm running in background so convolutional neural networks are used for computer vision and related applications and also cnn are used for natural language processing as we talked that the input of the cnn should be in grid format so yeah so basically cnn have been used for natural language processing but there are currently better state of the art architecture such as transformer and other types of architecture which perform relatively well on the natural language processing task than typical cnn so basically cnn are typically used for all the type of image tasks such as image classification and video processing object detection converting low resolution images to a high resolution images and yeah so this is the basic applications of cnn now what is pneumonia so basically pneumonia is a lung infection that affects the air sacs at the end of the airways okay the infection interferes with the delivery of oxygen from the air sacs into the blood and the removal of carbon dioxide from the blood and basically the new lets me explain you in this layman term that pneumonia causes infection in lungs and basically this hinders the process of oxygen absorption in the blood which effectively leads to suffocation and the death death occurs so this is what pneumonia is and basically the main reason of the death due to covid 19 was pneumonia so on the left you can see the so on the left you can see the uh, basically a normal lung and on the right you can see a pneumonic lung so on the right we the air sacs are completely visible yeah so on the left you can see the air sacs are completely visible and on the left side you can see that in the right lung there is some sort of cloudy cloudy distortions and basically the lungs are not visible so basically so yeah so basically that's what happens with the typical pneumonic lungs what happens is that the lungs get filled with some kind of pus or something that hinders the lung absorbing capacity of the particular yeah so oh, sorry the oxygen oxygen absorbing capacity of the lungs so this is why in so this is every doc, every doctor to basically analyze every patient physically and also there was uh, different types of protocols that needed to be follow for during the covid 19 and to and basically if a particular doctor is basically phys physically diagnosing different people so it would take much time so okay so my screen is not visible so let just me present my screen again okay
Okay, so I hope that it's visible now. Yeah, so I was talking about the normal lung and the pneumonia lung. So in the right, you can in the left image, in the normal lung, you can see that the both the lungs are completely visible. These are basically X-ray scans, and in the right, you can see that this these are the lungs of a patient in fact suffering from pneumonia. So the major cause of death during COVID-19 was pneumonia, and it wasn't possible for the doctors to physically diagnose everyone. So it would take just very much time. And in today's and also in since the COVID-19 lockdown is completely over, but still there are different types of of pneumonia and basically apart from COVID-19 there are certain factors such as people living in very polluted area or are also suffering from pneumonia so it's not possible for doctors to diagnose every patient physically and this leads to basically a huge amount of time in basically during the diagnosing and actually detecting pneumonia and this leads to death of certain patients so we will be trying to build a model which would be helping doctors and people in the healthcare industry to basically deal with pneumonia and let's get started with the hands on python so if there are any doubt just let me know in the chat section we'll be just uh, taking around 5 minutes to just go through all the doubts and know what's happening with you guys. Okay, so just let me know in the chat section what your doubts are, okay? Okay, so let's carry forward and let's basically begin with uh, yeah. So let's begin with the normal session, uh, normal Python session. Yep. So first of all, all you need to do is basically yeah. So first of all, all you need to do is open Kaggle and just follow the steps as I'm going. Okay. So you need to go to the Kaggle.com and uh, you need to search or don't search i will be just putting yeah this is the data set we'll be using and just let me post this data set into the chat section okay so i have posted the data set in the chat section and now all you need to do is click on the new notebook. And this will basically create a notebook. And the data set will be loaded all along. Then click on the accelerator and select any GPU you want. It can be T4 into 2, and but we won't be needing that. And now wait for a while the draft session is starting. And Okay, so I have posted the link in the chat section and you all can copy the link from there.
and just let me present my screen okay so i still don't know why it's Okay, so yeah, so just let me uh, quickly take you through just open the Kaggle.com and after going to Kaggle, just search for pneumonia. And after searching on pneumonia, you will be getting the first data set. This is a chest X-ray images. Just click on this data set and then click on the new notebook and this notebook will be and you will be then and yeah then you will be forwarded here to the new notebook session and then you need to just follow along okay 
Yeah, so let me just give you some quick info. So basically, PIL is basically Python imaging library and it enables Python to perform different types of image operations. And this TensorFlow is basically a deep learning library. It allows us to create neural networks and we will we'll be using matplotlib for basic plotting. And uh, yeah, so this is all we are going to. Um, yeah. So basically, just let look at a sample image. So all you need to do is basically write pil dot image dot open and just go through this chest X-ray, expand it, open the train, and select. Uh, and you can select any images. I will select the first one. Just click on the side copy file path, and after copying the file path, you need to paste it over here. And the image will be open. Okay, so now you can see the image of a. So this is how image of a pneumo person suffering from pneumonia looks like, and you can see that the lungs are clearly not visible. And let's also check the image for a normal person, how they look like. And also for the same purpose, you will be using pil dot image dot open. Just copy the image of the normal lungs, paste it, and execute it. So the now no, normal image has been loaded. Let's check it how the normal lungs look like. So here you are completely able to see that these the lungs in this these images are completely visible, but here the lungs are not visible. They look some hazy and some cloudy. So this is what a symptom of pneumonia is. Basically, this is how doctors diagnose pneumonia. They basically select X-ray and then in X-ray, basically they observe whether the lungs are cloudy or whether the lungs are filled with some fluid or there is an infection in the lungs. If there is some infection in the lungs, or if there is some problem with the lungs, the lungs appear to be basically hazy or cloudy. And this happens because here the blood supply or the blood flow isn't sufficient and the oxygen isn't much in the blood. So that causes this hazy or this cloudy nature of the lungs. Okay. So now what we'll be trying to do will be basically. Yeah, so now we'll be using just let me type tensorflow dot kiras dot preprocessing dot image import image data generator. Yeah, so now what this image data generator basically does is that this image data generator we will be taking this whole data set as an input and would will be creating three types of other image data generator basically three types of data generator one is for train one is for validation and one is for testing and then we'll be using these three data generators to basically train a model and then validate a model during the training at every step and then the final model will be tested on the test generator okay so yeah, so let me just define the training directory. So the training directory over here will be the path of the train folder. OK, all you need to do is just copy it and paste it. And now what we will be doing is basically we'll be defining the training generator. And here, what we'll be doing basically, we'll be calling image data generator. And now, inside this, we need to define an image data generator, and then we need to define the pip to have, and then we are good to go. And then we can use this training generators to directly train our deep learning models.
okay so just do this okay so this tells that i want to rescale my images basically or basically i want to divide my each pixel by 255 and now what i'm going to do is basically here uh, so yeah so now i'll be using the trailing generator to basically okay so just like me in my screen okay okay so all i need to do is basically i will be basically calling my e training generator and then i will be providing the training directory as an input to the training generator and my train data will be automatically generated from this okay so just let me training generator and then i need to define flow from directory okay so now i will be basically informing my train image data generator to load data from the training directory and then after loading the data from the training directory give me a generator or basically give me the data which can be used to train the model okay so now let us just execute this Okay, so just a second. I will just execute it again. Okay. No such file or directory train. Okay, so there is some chest x ray pneumonia. Okay, so no issue. Yeah, so now you will be seeing that. The image data generators are automatically identified that there are 5216 images that belong to two of the classes. Okay. And now, in the same way, we need to define our validation generator and then we'll be defining our, yeah, the test generator. Okay. So, all we need to do is basically we need to change the path. We need to do is validation directory. And here I'll be changing the part to valid. And this will be a validation generator. And here this will be my validation data. And just keep this validation generator. Okay. Okay, this is one and here i need to change it to valid directory yeah so it has found that there are 16 images in the validation directory and that belong to two class and that two classes are basically whether the lungs are normal or the lungs are infected with pneumonia and we need to do the same for the test data as well we just need to rename the existing generators Okay, so yeah, so automatically the data has automatically been identified that there are 624 images and they belong to two classes. Okay. Now what we need to do is basically we will be building our convolution neural network and this is one of the most important steps. So please observe this one carefully. Okay. So what we need to basically this is this goes very easy when we need to define a uh, Neural network using TensorFlow. All we need to do is basically we need to call the sequential, and basically in sequential we'll be giving the input of uh, different types of layers we want in our neural network. So the first layer will be the convolution.
Okay, and now we need to define number of filters that is 32 and then we need to define what is the size of the filters. Okay, and then the input shape of the images. Now, basically what we need to do is basically we still don't know the input shape. Okay, so what I will do is basically I will tell the image data generator to basically load the images with a target size of 120 across 120. So now we don't need to worry about our, what is the actual resolution of the images. Our training data generator will automatically convert all of our data, all of our images into the into all our images into size of 120 cross 120. Okay, so just give me a second. Uh, this is 120 cross 120. Okay, so sorry, this is not input shape. This is target size. Sorry. Okay. Yeah, so all of that training data have been loaded into that data train and these basically class belong to two different classes normal and pneumonia and basically what we try to do now we will be try, trying to train a neural network and all it did and all we need to do is basically define the target size of the images so now we don't need to actually worry about which type or what is the input shape of the what is the basically the resolution of the images all the training data is converted into the image of 120 cross 120 and here we will work to define 120 cross 120 and since we are dealing with colored images we will be doing a tree if there would have been grayscale images this three would have not have been there and instead one have been would, would have been there but since we are dealing with color data it's three and now after convolution layers comes the pooling layer as we discussed earlier in our actual where we were discussing the architecture and now what we need to do is layers dot max pooling and it automatically okay just a second max pooling 2d and here we need to define what would be the size of and basically what what should be the sub size of the image of, of the matrix obtained from convolution layer should be okay so i'm setting this as two cross two and then again comes the convolution layer and this con this uh, combination of convolution layers this layer yeah so this combination of convolution layers can be used convolution layer and max pooling layer can be used n number of times and basically I'll be doing it for till 256 or 128. Let's just see. Okay, and in the next convolution layer, we need, don't need to define the input size report. It's already defined in the first layer. Okay, so again, max, max pooling 2D, and again, two cross two. And then just let me copy this whole block. One twenty eight and it would be two fifty six. Okay. Yeah. So now what we need to do is basically we need that all the uh, data, all the features which have been extracted till now in the form of the matrices, matrix matrices should be converted into a single one D array. Okay. So we'll be using the flatten layer, and now what we're doing, trying to will be using the dense layer. Okay. okay, and this is the basically the classic classification layer. Okay, so in dense we need to define one. Okay, yeah. So in we need to define one, and that one is basically for, since we want the output as basically the probability of uh, what is the extent that the input image 
has lungs infected with pneumonia. Okay. And for the activation, we'll be using sigmoid. And since it, it's a binary classification, we'll be using a class activation layer sigmoid. If it would have been basically more than two classes, we would have been used softmax as a final. Okay. So yeah, so now we are good to go. And basically there's one more additional layer. It's completely optional, but uh, I typically use it always. And now basically I typically use it. Basically, I don't want my model to overfit. Okay. So this dropout layer basically tells the percentage of the weights that should be dropped. So I, so here I'm setting a 20% of the weight should be dropped. So this will allow our models not to get overfit. Okay. Yeah, so the model has come successfully been built and here comes some warnings uh, since the model has been loaded into the GPU. And we are using GPU since GPU provides faster processing and training than CPUs. So we are using GPU and we can use model or summary to see the actual model of and basically we can see that there's a first convolution layer. The output shape is 118 comma 118 and basically the none here denotes the batch size at how many number of images will be loaded into the neural network while training at once. So if we select batch size as one, so it will be fun in comma 118 comma 118 comma 32. If we select in the batch as eight, it would be eight comma 118 comma 118 comma 32. So since the, we have built the neural network and at the moment we haven't defined the batch size, and basically the batch size can be defined in both the image data generator and during the training process as well. So this dimension is basically labeled as none over here. And you can see that there's a first convolution layer, first max pooling layer and second convolution layer, second max pooling layer and it goes on and on and on. And the, then we'll be using dropout to basically drop out 20% of the weight so that our model doesn't overfit. And then we will be using flatten layer to basically convert the matrices obtained from max pooling layer. That is basically feature extraction process to convert into 1D array. And then we are using the last layer as a dense. Basically dense is a simple feed forward neural network layer. And this dense will basically, yeah. So this dense will basically give us an output of a probability that what is the probability score that the uh, image associate image that the image in the input image of the lungs have been infected with pneumonia. OK, so now just to do a second step. So after building the successful model, we need to compile the model. So during the compilation process, we need to define that what would be the optimizer and uh, what would be. So yeah, so most common optimizer is Adam optimizer tf .kiras dot optimizers dot atom and we need to define the learning rate. So learning rate is basically the number of steps and during the optimizer during the training process, the number of steps it will take. OK, so we need to define it something as low as 0 0.001 and we need we do basically this so that while a model is performing the back propagation. So it's a whole calculus involved behind all this and since okay so we have a okay yeah so basically there are lots of maths behind involved behind this and basically what we will be trying to do is basically we'll be choosing yeah if we will choosing a learning rate which you basically isn't high if we choose something high then it will automatically yeah if we choose something high then it will basically miss the global loss minima okay so to avoid this we basically define learning rate something as low and then we need to define the loss function and for the loss function since it's a binary classification problem we'll be using binary cross entropy it would it, if uh, the problem statement would have been something dealing with image classification and something like uh, and something like uh, multiple classification problems. For example, we needed to identify dog, dog, cats, horses, and fellows from a given image. Then it would 
consider it would consist of four classes and we would have been using basically okay so yeah so just is the screen visible Yeah, so since if, if we would have greater number of classes, more than two, then we would have been used basically categorical cross entropy as a loss and we will be using. Yeah, and matrix we will be using basically the, this would be the matrix displayed. We'll be using it as something accuracy. Okay, so now let's compile the model. Now our model has been successfully compiled. And now what I will try to do is basically, all we need to do is basically, we need to define a variable history. This will contain all the information while the training of the model, okay? To fit underscore generator, and we need to fit the train underscore, okay, the train data, okay? The data we obtained from the, the data we obtained over here. Uh, here is the part. Yep. So this is the data valid data train. So here we will be providing a model this input to train this for validation and this for testing. Okay. So now let's just we need to mention number of epochs. So since I was setting the epochs to two. So if you want to increase the accuracy and uh, let me just present my screen again okay. and I don't know why it's happening again and again. Yeah, so what I will I will do is basically I will select epox is equal to two. Now what epox means is that the number of basically the model will basically go through every image present in the data set at least once. And this is what epox basically means. If we define greater number of epox, our model will train well. And if we try out very high number of epox, our model may over overfit. Okay, so this is epochs and basically, basically I'm selecting two epochs since we have not that much amount of time, but you guys definitely have. So you can try it out using 10 or 15 epochs. I think it's going to take around three minutes. It, it usually takes one to, one to three minutes for a single epoch. And let's just uh, now, yeah. And let's define validation data that is basically Data validation. And now let's just start the training process. Hope it starts successfully. So now let's wait for our model to get completed. And yeah, it's taking around one minute. And the accuracy on the training data is 50%, and the loss is 0 0.76, and it's still decreasing. So let's see after two epochs how much data or how a performance or how basically a model performs okay, on the train data as well as validation data. And basically, the test data is basically specifically used to test a model after training. And during the training, we basically train the model on train data, and then we check after every epoch, how our model is performing on the good or the validation data. Our main focus during the training pro process uh, should be that our uh, model should perform very well on the validation data. Okay, we shouldn't take care. We should we shouldn't take into consideration about uh, training valid training accuracy and training loss. But we should be more focused that how our model basically performs during the validation time. OK, so our complete focus should be on the validation data or how a model performs on validation data. So still the accuracy is 50. Let's see how it's performed the second epoch. If there is some type of. Uh, yeah, so if, if the model doesn't achieve the required accuracy, then we may try to increase the number of layers. So let's see. 
how our model is performing right now. Yeah, so there is no change in the accuracy. So what we will try to do is basically we will try to, yeah, so there's no change in the accuracy on both training data and validation data. Now what we will try to do is basically we will try to increase the number of layers and uh, basically what we will try to do is basically we'll be increasing the number of layers and we will, what we can do is basically remove this uh, dropout layer as of now. And let's see is uh, Kira's dot layers dot max pooling. Comma two, and then above PF dot Kira's dot layers dot on evolution layer. And what I'll do is five one two and then filter size basically three cross three. Okay, so now let's just compile and see how it's performing. And now comes the most important concept, okay? The activation layer. Now, since we didn't define the activation layer, it was taking the activation layer linear, okay? So we'll be defining activation layer and it's not, okay, yeah, it's not layer, it's just activation, okay? Just copy it. We need to do it for every convolution layer, okay? Now just compile this, okay, what's the error? Activation, relu, tf dot kiras dot layers dot max pulling. Where's the issue? Line number 10. just a comma mistake and everything get up, gets fucked up. So yeah, so basically during the model building process, there are lots of work and to avoid getting bugged up, what you need to do is basically just follow the traceback call and it should be good to go, okay? Then now again, model summary, it will give it as give the summary. And now let's train the model again, okay? Let's see how it performs. Right? still the model isn't learning anything okay so now what we will try to do we will we try to give we will try to create another layer of tense layers okay so now let's define this tense layer as activation uh, and activation as relu and now let's see how it performs okay okay again yeah just yeah okay now again let's compile the model
wait for another two minutes to see how the model is performing right now. So while dealing with deep learning model, this is always a problem that from the scratch, we don't know which model is perform, going to perform best and how many number of players should be there. And Yeah, and since it's uh, always a problem with these types of neural networks is that we don't know how many number of layers we need to define and what should be the image size and what should be the different types of things. And now what we will be trying to do is we'll be going through different steps and we checking if there, if there is something wrong with the data. Okay, our model isn't learning anything. So now what we can try to do is we can try to define the path size in the generator. And what I can do is basically I will write that path size should be eight. Since if there is no input given, the path size is assumed by default and it won't give, a, give us much better results. And now what we need to define is basically, we can try out different parameters as of now, okay. So yeah, so another one could be class mode that's binary. Okay, so there are different types of class modes available. It's a binary classification problem. So let's do it for all the types of generator. And here as well. Okay, into comma. Again, we need to recompile this model. Press, press shift plus enter. And yep, it worked. So there was issue with the batch size. So we thought that our training generator would assume the batch size for us, us but uh, the problem was that our training generator, the default batch size it, it assumed didn't give us favorable results. So now the model is getting trained and the accuracy is getting increased. The loss is getting decreased. So this is what we wanted. And now it's basically the model is getting fit well. Let's wait for another minute and then it will be good, good to go. The model is performing well on the training data and it's not very good in predicting the validation images. And another problem could have been that uh, since there are only 16 images belonging to two classes in the validation data. So, yep. So basically there are very less number of images then a model is not able to basically so if there would have been more number of images, we would have, we would have got a precise result of what is the validation accuracy of a model since it contains only 16 images. And let's see that uh, how many images are there in. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight images in this and eight images in this. So this is a very small validation data. So instead of worrying about this, let's check that how a model basically performs on that test data. And for that, we can use model.evaluate. And basically, what we can do is basically, let's check how our model is performing on test data. Yeah, so basically the loss of our model is 0 0.7384. That is binary cross entropical loss. And this is accuracy is 0 0.7276. So our model is basically 72% accurate on our test data with just two number of epochs. So you, get, you guys can try 
hide out yourself by increasing the number of the box and changing the learning rate and you guys can also play around with the architecture as well changing the number of filters changing the number of uh, size of the filters and yeah so now let's just ask our model to make predictions on the test data so we'll be using model.predict and we'll be using data.test to make predictions on the test data this is how predictions look like it gave us a score that whether a particular person is suffering from pneumonia or not and these are the probability the score the first the probability score for the first image in the test data is 27% 40% yeah and this 99% what is 99% show that this is pneumonia so let's now plot the predictions as well as as the images for the first for the first uh, you can say Okay, so oh, sorry, sorry. By by mistake. Yeah, stop the screen. So now, yeah, so now what we'll, we can try to do is basically we'll be basically checking the number of checking the images in the test data, and now we'll be now let's check basically that. The images in the text generator, test data generator are. And this step will basically take us through every different images in the training data. Oh, sorry, test data. And I will be just selecting 16 images from the start. I'll be using guilty I am show. And uh, that would be image J PLT dot show. Yeah, so it's completely visible. Uh, and let me just think. Yeah, so the probability of the in this particular lungs having pneumonia is 27% and that's completely observable that uh, the lungs are completely visible and the probability of the pneumonia for the second one is 40% and for this it's 99% and it's completely, we can completely get that since the the left side, the right side of the image, the it contains the lungs and the lungs are very hazy. So it's yeah, it's definitely a pneumonia. And then we can go on and check the yeah. So here the lungs are also hazy. Some part of the lungs are hazy. So it's a pneumonia. It's a pneumonia. It's not a pneumonia. And uh, okay, we have got some error. So no issues. Okay. So that would have been just basically because I said, yeah, so the bath size was eight, right? Yeah, so it could, you won't get the error now. Yeah. So we, if we define bath size as eight, then for a single iteration, the test uh, for the, yeah, for the single iteration, for the single, for this loop, it would, there would be eight images. Okay. Yeah. And now we can see that the lungs, which are hazy, have been provided with a score of, uh, high probability score that they, the lungs are infected with pneumonia, okay? So that's all for the session. So I'll be sh uh, sharing an assignment with you all and don't worry, I'll be sharing the link of the data set as well as, as the notebook link with you all. You can play around the notebook, play with optimizers, play with neural networks, the hyperparameters such as filter size and the image size as well. And yeah, I will be sharing the PPT with you all.
so thank you for joining the session and sorry for the glitches it happens sometimes so yeah it's a technical thing so technical thing can get glitches anytime so sorry for that so and very much thank you for the day you can connect with me with my so on my social media links i'll be providing you my social media links and clear get your all doubts clear okay thank you so much for joining the session thank you so much